A UN observer mission convoy in Syria has come under attack by tanks. That's according to the world body's chief, Ban Ki moon. The incident apparently happened in an opposition held area outside the flashpoint city of Holmes. Meanwhile, a U.S. State Department spokesperson said Washington is planning to increase aid on top of a $15 million package already allocated for the opposition. Anti-Assad forces have also called on their foreign supporters to supply them with sophisticated weapons to use against government tanks and aircraft. That's amid continuing clashes in the country's northern city of Aleppo, where both the army and rebel forces claim progress. The focus of the battles have shifted to the Syrian commercial hub after regime troops flushed out rebels from Damascus over a week ago. And as RT's Oksana Boyka reports, the dust is now slowly settling in the capital. It doesn't take much to set Syrians off these days. On edge and on a very tight budget, residents of Damascus are now trying to reclaim the basics they used to take for granted. The uprising may have started with political protests, but now they are starting to morph into riots. Economically, life is getting harder for ordinary Syrians. With the rebels targeting supply trucks, the price of a gallon of gas has risen fourfold in the last few months. So when a pro-government NGO attempted to distribute fuel at pre-war prices, it found itself overwhelmed by the demand. Because uh, of all of these... Uh, uh, special circumstances that happened lately, uh, people maybe get, got more nervous. Of course, people had more uh, uh, difficulties to get their uh, supplies. No, no, uh, no, it's, everything is, is getting better. Life is slowly returning to the capital, as are the thousands of people who fled the turmoil there in the past weeks. But what they find in their neighborhoods is unlikely to instill much confidence in either of the warring parties. The damage inflicted by the clashes to the Syrian infrastructure is already estimated at $11 billion and still counting. That's almost 70% of the country's annual budget. You can argue about who is to blame for all this destruction, but it's certainly a very high price to pay for any sort of struggle, whether it is for democracy or for stability. No matter who emerges the winner, Syrians have already lost. The government has promised to help with rebuilding, but the scale of destruction and the already flagging economy begs the question of just how fast and how efficient that reconstruction will be. Meanwhile, some are already starting to lose patience. Mohammed, a flower trader, has returned home to find all three of his cars burned out. He used to count himself among supporters of the government, but now his loyalties are uncertain. I don't support the opposition. I want to live here like my father and grandfather. But if the government can't provide us with peace and security, either I'll have to move to another country or the government needs to go. He's not somebody who would trade his implements for a rifle, but in his neighborhood, youngsters are already being radicalized. This police car was set on fire by the rebels. The charred remains of an officer are still inside. Ali says all government sympathizers deserve such a death. Strong words for a 15-year-old who hasn't finished high school yet. All I want is to finish Bashar Assad. Enough of him. In addition to political differences, the conflict in Syria is also generational. The young want to fight, while the old struggle to find cover. Their only goal is to drag Syria into chaos. Everything was fine. Now it's only getting worse. Both the army and the rebels claim they're fighting for a better life. But the majority of civilians trapped in between shudder at a thought of how much worse it's going to get before it gets any better. Aksana Boyka RT, reporting from Damascus in Syria.